Monolith M1570 Review Both the M1070 and M1570 headphones are essentially the same except for their appearance and the use of a different connection for the headphone cord. The M1570 is big, burly, and heavy at 705 grams compared to 585 grams. It is heaviness when wearing them, but they aren't uncomfortable to put on. The large pads cover my ears comfortably, but the headband feels too wide for my small head. They're great for those who love big sounds. Craftsmanship is solid and though there does not appear to be any information on the materials used. We can assume they're made of lightweight but durable metals for both the frame and hinges, combined with some plastics here and there. It's a simple design but there's so much of it. These are also only available in black and mark them out as a pair that Batman would wear. The earphones come with replaceable ear pads, but they don't include an audio cable for connecting them to your device. Don't expect to get the best audio experience from these headphones unless you purchase them directly from monoprice.com. However, they're not too expensive so there isn't any reason why you shouldn't give them a shot. Aside from the XLRs, the M1570 matches the M1070 in almost everything else. Impedance is low, so a dedicated amp is needed if you want to get the most out of these headphones. A large 106mm driver is used to produce a spacious sound stage. Sensitivity is 96 decibels, which is about average for portable headphones. It's not quite as sensitive as the best-selling audio hi-fi headphones, such as those made by Bose, Sony, or AKG. It's good enough to hear music without having to crank your volume too high. The headphones also include active noise cancellation technology, so they block out background noises better than passive models do. They aren't nearly as powerful as dedicated audio hi-fi headphones. If you plan to listen to music at full blast, you might want to invest in one of these instead. The frequency response is 5 Hz to 20 kHz. The human range can hear frequencies between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. So you might be able to feel bass sounds below 20 Hz to 20 kHz, but you'll need some high-end equipment and high-resolution audio files for that to happen. These headphones aren't suitable for people who know nothing about amplifiers and equalization. If we're talking about the Monolith versus the M1070, then I would say that sound quality is the deciding factor between the two. They both offer good sound quality, however, I prefer the sound coming out of the M1070. Both models offer excellent audio quality, but they don't differ significantly in terms of their sonic characteristics. There's an overall warmer and richer sound to the M1570 compared to the M1070. It sounds better at lower volumes and produces more bass than the M1070. However, the M1070's clear and sharp high-frequency performance reveals more details within tracks that aren't as clearly heard on the M1570. You can hear the difference between 192 kilobits per second and 96 kilobits per second when listening to the Corellia Chase by Clayton from the Sola soundtrack. The 192 kilobits per second version has more energy and presence than the 96 kilobits per second version. However, the voice quality is not quite as good as the 192 kilobits per second version. Compared to the similarly priced Shivka SV023, the Monolith is the heavier feeling instrument and voice reproduction device. It is lighter and more subtle in describing instruments and voices. The M1570 has a good sound quality but the M1070 produces a clearer and more detailed sound, 